If you ever thought about having a family management company to save money on taxes, well, your idea is not wrong or was not wrong. In this video, I will show you how to use a family management company to save money on taxes. Do you really need it? Do you not need it? And exactly how it works. By the end of this video, you will know if you need a family management company, what to do, how to use it, and a tax strategy behind it. Ready? Let's go. Hey, welcome to my whiteboard tax strategy. My name is Boris Mushayev. I'm a CPA and a certified tax strategist. Every Tuesday, I release a tax strategy video here on YouTube for you, the business owner. By watching this video, my goal is for you to start paying less in taxes right away. So go ahead, subscribe to my channel, like it, share it, and even comment below. I appreciate you, now let's get started. Awesome, let's get started with this tax strategy. Family management company. So I broke it down for you in three t uh, simple steps. We're gonna talk about what is really FMC, a family management company, how it works, and what is a tax strategy behind it. So definitely make sure you stay till the end so you'll be able to utilize this tax strategy after this video is over. Now, what is a family management company? What is the purpose of it? And why is it even does it even exist, okay? Now, a family management company is just another company that you own, okay? It's a separate from your main operating business. Your main operating business could be an S corporation. Or if you own a bunch of rental properties and you wanna set up a family management company to manage those properties, this would actually be a good idea because the properties can pay you a management fee and you can take advantage of all the deductions and the benefits from that management company. So really family management company is just another entity that you own. And the family management company provides services to your other companies that you own. Like I said, that could be your S corporation, that could even be your C corporation or your LLC, whatever that may be. Or if you own real estate properties, it would actually be a great idea to have a family management company to take advantage of some owner compensation strategies, healthcare strategies, retirement strategies, additional write-offs and so forth. So we'll definitely talk about that. Make sure to stay till the end. Now, a family management company, a lot of questions, a lot of times I get asked the question, how should this entity be set up? So it really depends. There is no one answer that fits the solution for your question. It depends on your financial situation and what you will use the family management company for. Really, the family management company could be a single member LLC just owned by you, a multi-member LLC owned by you and your spouse. Okay, it could be an S corporation. This would actually super helpful when you own other properties, a lot of properties, and you have a family management company that manages those properties, right? Think of it as a property management company. And a C corporation, a great way also is to have family management company be structured as a C corporation because C corporation pays a lower tax. And a family management company can be used to basically shift income from your other entities. So really it depends on your tax situation. There is no one answer fits all the solution. So that's why make sure you please speak to your tax advisor about this. Do not implement any of this stuff on your own without a tax advisor. I'm just here to kind of educate you about this. Now, let's talk about how it works right after this break. Hey, Boris Mushave here. Sorry for the quick interruption. Five seconds, I promise. I wanna make sure you get your free PDF, seven write-offs every S-Corporation business owner must know. The link to this free PDF is in the description below. That's it, thank you so much, continue watching. All right, welcome back. Let's talk about how this tax strategy works. So, I've broken down to you in these two little graphs. Okay, so follow me through on this. I'll try not to speak quick so that you, the business owner, can understand this and be able to implement this tax strategy right away. So, let's start with this section right here. Okay, the second section right here is when you own real estate properties. I will talk about that. But let's talk about when you have a business and now you want to set up a family management company. One thing I want to mention is that Family management company, it's just a general term. It could really be a property management company, just a management company that manages your properties or your other businesses. It's just referred to as a family management company. Some people ask, hey, do I need a management company or do I need a family management company? Really, it's all in the same, okay? So now that we got that terminology, let's kind of continue over here. So this is you, right? You as an individual, this could be you and your spouse. 
and you own, I put a question mark over here. The reason I put a question mark is that depending how you structure your entities, you definitely wanna make sure you speak to your tax advisor about it. In most cases, individuals have a holding company over here. This holding company could be in the states such as Nevada, Delaware, or Wyoming. I put a question mark over here. Everybody operates different. Everybody has their different structures. Every tax advisor has a different strategy based on your situation. So I put that little question mark over here. So from the holding company, you can own your business or your family management company. Now, if you don't have a holding company, don't worry. It's no big deal. You can do it later. Just because you don't have it right now, you can always do it later. Don't think that you're missing out on a tax strategy. So now you have a business and you've got a family management company. Let's use an example of a family management company that employs your children to provide services to your business. We have a video about this on YouTube, so there should be a link below for you to check that out, okay? So you've got a business, your business pays management fee to your family management company. Your family management company, in return, provide services to your main business. And if that is that your kids work for you from the family management company for your business, then that's what the services are. It's staffing agency services. Like I said in my other video, don't run around now, start forming family management companies, hiring your kids without speaking to your tax advisor. There has to be an executable tax strategy. It has to be documented and all the paperwork has to be ready before it can be executed. Do not do this without a tax advisor. If you're working with a tax preparer, Oh my God, you're overpaying in taxes. I guarantee you what you need is a tax advisor to be able to save money on taxes. So one thing is important to note, family management company, it's not a holding company. Now I've seen some stuff out there from other accountants or even some advisors that they say, hey, your holding company is your management company. I personally do not follow that strategy because a holding company should be a holding company. That means it needs to hold your assets and to protect you, it gives you that extra layer of protection. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a management company. A management company should be a separate entity. That's why I put a question mark over here. Some advisors out there might be saying, no, this right here is your management company and your holding company. I don't follow that practice. I like to keep everything clean, organized, and with that extra layer of security and legal protection. Now, we've got a business that pays a family management company. Family management company is not a holding company, and it could be any entity type. For example, when you're employing children in your business and you're doing it through a family management company, it's best to have this family management company file taxes as a sole proprietor or single member LLC. If this was, for example, other type of a management company, in some cases you can actually use, set up a family management company to take advantage of health insurance benefits. That's right. This usually works when you are the only employee of your business. You have really high deductible, you have really high medical expenses, and you set up what's called an HRA 105 reimbursement arrangement, a medical reimbursement arrangement. That means you would set up a family management company that is now a C corporation. Again, it really depends on your situation, but family management companies are a great way to save money on taxes, but it's gotta be pro uh, documented properly, legitimately, and have legitimacy to it. So definitely make sure you speak to your tax advisor about it. So this is one part of the equation of having a family management company. Awesome, now the second section over here that I've outlined for you is a different type of a family management company setup. And that is if you own real estate property. So again, the idea is kind of the same, right? You own, you as an individual, could have a holding company. That's why I have a question mark here. So I don't know what your situation is like. If you don't have a holding company, that's okay right now. You can always create it later. Now, you can still set up a family management company that can be owned by you. And then let's say you also own rental real estate. So the triangle right here represents an LLC. Okay, so LLC one with one rental property, LLC two with the second rental property, LLC three with the third rental property. 
all of these rental properties can pay f a, f a management fee to your family management company. Now, why would you wanna do that? Why would you wanna set up a family management company? Also, AKA, also known as, as property management company. The reason is, is because when you collect management fees over here, you can now take a lot of write-offs against it. Now, true, you could have write-offs against your rental properties, but it becomes cumbersome. Keeping track, hey, I traveled to this property, so I have to deduct it under this LLC. I traveled to another property, I have to deduct it under this LLC. You've got one car, three properties, complicates things, okay, complicates things. So you wanna have a family management company or a property management company where you can keep all the deductions there. Now, you can also use tax strategies as either having it maybe in a C corporation. That depends. I'm not saying open a C corporation, but definitely discuss it with your tax advisor because C corporation is in a lower tax bracket. Could that help you? Or you can buy a car, a company car under this, have an owner salary comp compensation tax strategy, or take retirement tax strategies from this or some other fringe benefits. So that's why you would want to set it up. Again, two different scenarios. This is where you have an, one business and family management company provide services. In this case, you've got a property management company that is your family management company, but you've got rental properties paying you fa family management fees. Now, let's talk about a tax strategy. We kind of discussed most of it, but really let's talk about, hey, does having a family management company reduces taxes? Do you need it or not? And we'll be back right after this break. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. Very quickly, if you don't mind, I wanna ask for your help. I need your help. I want other business owners just like you that will benefit from a video like this to catch this video. The best thing that you can do for me, please either like the video or even say something in the comments because that really helps the YouTube algorithm when, they, when it sees a lot of engagement to push the video to other uh, to other business owners just like yourself or better yet subscribe to the channel would be much appreciated thank you again now let's get back to the tax strategy now this family management company reduces your taxes the answer is in most times yes it does but you've got to speak to your tax advisor without a proper tax strategy documentation and an intent that you have an intent for the family management company, right? The proper intent, knowing what you're gonna use it for, how and what tax entity will it be in, you may not be able to save money on taxes. So definitely, does it reduce taxes? Yes, it does. But you've gotta work with a tax advisor to make that strategy happen for you, to map it out, see what deductions you can take, what fringe benefits and what entities it could be on. Is it complicated to set up a family management company? Honestly, in most cases, no. If you already, if you wanna set it up for this scenario right here, where you've got a business and you wanna set up a family management company and it's going to be providing services, awesome, great, not that complicated. At first, it takes a little bit of time to set up, but then it's totally okay. So it's not that complicated when you set it up the first time and then really becomes an autopilot. The third, is it really necessary? In most cases, it might not be even necessary. I've, I've come across some business owners, they own one property and they open a property management company. Like, no, you don't need to do that. Now you're complicating things. Definitely speak to your tax advisor. Do you need a family management company? Can it act as a property management company? Or can this family management company provide services to your other businesses? You've got to speak to your tax advisor. In some cases, having a family management company may not be necessary. It could cost you extra fees, extra compliance, extra taxes and filings. In most cases, it's a great tax strategy, but you've got to speak to your tax advisor in order to see if you really need this. Ladies and gentlemen, I always say, if you've got a profitable business, I can guarantee you right now, if you're not working with a tax advisor, advisor, you are overpaying in taxes. You see, tax code was designed in a way to help you, the business owner, save money on taxes. Most business owners, combined with their estate, pay 40% tax. Now, I'm not saying don't pay any tax, but it is your duty and obligation and responsibility to be able to use the tax code to your advantage because the tax code was written in a way where you can save money on taxes. Don't believe me? Go ask other tax advisors and find out that what you've been doing so far is nothing. You have been overpaying in taxes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for letting me do this video for you and until the next time.